On Two Wheels this week, the third and final part of our tour to the French Champagne region. We'll meet tour organiser Alistair McFarlane to discover what he gets from a job like this. I'll be taking a close look at Honda's new touring sofa, the GL1800 Goldwing. But first, we travel to Nottingham to meet a man with a street fighting R1. Now I'm going to show you a bike that I've shown you before and that I've spoke about before. This one here, this R1, right? I'm right up to now. Now this is the proud owner, Foe. Now I spoke about your bike, Foe, when we was at the GMX Bike Show in Manchester. You did, mate, yeah. I did. And I said it was, it started as an accident damaged R1. Was that correct? It did. That's correct. But I gave the impression, you tell me, that it's just, it's an R1 with no bodywork. That's right. Right, now that, but that's not right, is it? No. It's a lot more than that. It is, mate. Right, yeah. go on, you tell me, you're the expert on this. You tell me why it's a lot more than just an R1 with no bodywork. It can never be put back to bodywork. It can never be a race bike again. Right. It's all been de -lugged. So the fairing wouldn't go back on no. even if you wanted no, to? No, they've, right. they've all been chopped off when, right. it, when it was polished. Right, there's, there's an absolute you know, wealth of, of uh, bits and pieces and goodies and work gone into this. Yep. Uh, what's it cost you, do you know? Or do you not want to tell me? Bike owes me now eight grand. That doesn't sound a lot, that. No. Because when I you, the new R1's right, eight grand, isn't it? Yeah, I bought it right, but I've spent on it, so. Right. No, I did blow it up as well last year, so. Did you? We're on engine number two. <laughs> well, yeah. And you've got a signature on this on this idea, is that? Yeah, who's it's that? Noriyuki Haga. Noriyuki Haga's yeah. signature there, you can just a bit of a, bit of a squiggle there, I've right? rubbed it off. You've rubbed it off. <laughs> <laughs> Go on then, tell me, I mean, this is only a half hour show, I know you remember that. Tell me roughly what you've done to it then. Uh, well, what's the best thing you've done to it? What exhaust, you system. Exhaust. exhaust system. Well, I spoke about that, didn't I? Remember you that? You did, mate, yeah. Because you made this. I didn't make it, right. my mate made it. Your mate it's made all it. made by hand. But it's, it's fantastic, isn't it? Yeah. It's beautiful. All, all trays and everything, all this under seat unit, all had to be took away. Yeah, because normally, it, yeah, it'd That's come right. down there, wouldn't it? Yeah. And if you look at, uh, fantastic. you get them aftermarket ones now that sit down here. Yeah. Under, under tray. Well, I wanted them to sit up where back lights used to be on R1. Yeah. So that's where the actual back lights used to be. Because, I mean, that's that's a true under seat exhaust. I mean, yeah. it's not just underneath the seat, that's it's right. actually in the seat almost, that's isn't right. it? It's tailor made for bike. And this is your back light now? Yeah. <laughs> it used to chase like Night Rider, but uh, right. Lincolnshire police didn't like it. So Did they not? Take it off. <laughs> <laughs> But there's all the other bits, I mean, all the, all the anodised bits and pieces and everything, isn't there? How much of it is R1? Uh, well, there's like 90% on it, it's still R1. You've got your yeah. frame, your engine, wheels, bodywork. But it's just like, I've took everything off and started again. Yeah. Uh, everything on it, if it's aluminium, it's being polished. Right. Well, I can see that, yeah. Yep. I mean, you can see your face in that, can't you? It and really uh, is. I if mean, it was steel, the, it's the, being chromed. The top end, what about the, the, the top of the yokes there? I mean, that's... Up top, yeah, that's all. That one made by Isaacs. Yeah, because this new, is all. Different. Yeah, it's all cut out for clocks and everything. Look, all CNC out for clocks, so it fitted the shape of clocks and everything. It's absolutely stunning, it really is. And the paint job, Pitbull did the paint Pitbull, job. Pitbull, yeah, same lad that made, made exhaust. Did he? he painted it. Yeah, he's a talented lad, then, isn't uh, he? First time we'd ever had a go with airbrush. Yeah. Yeah. No, I don't that believe was, that. That was his first crack. That, that was, was his first, first attempt. Crack. Yeah. It's fantastic. It's but it, super. You know everything I said. He just did it, he put it on. Yeah. So I want a bit of checkered flag on no, it. No, I just noticed there's all down here. Yeah, we moved all ignition system. Because up there there's no ignition. That's right. The keys down here. That's right. Why, why, I mean, why do that? It's... Well, normally, when you, first thing that goes when you come off them is yeah. ignition. Yeah. Rips egg top off, takes key out of ignition and everything. Yeah, yeah. And then it's, it's unridable. Can't get going again. Right. So, so I moved it down there in case you fall off it. You ain't going to fall <laughs> off it. You won't fall off it. Oh, I'll fall off it. <laughs> have, have you fell off it? Have you? Have you? Have uh, you <laughs> I fell off it twice. Yeah? <coughs> well, not wheeling, I, I suppose. I fell off once wheeling, yeah, and I fell off once with this lock on. That's like BMF. <laughs> <laughs> now, that is embarrassing. Straight up at bars. Hey, that is embarrassing. Right? Yeah, Have you done was. anything to the engine? Is that standard engines, performance wise? Engines have been tuned on top end. It's Has got it? uh, some porting work done on the head. Right. Uh, it's been dynajetted. Right. So it goes uh, well, and it's, as well yeah, as looking well. It's shoving a 146 bracket back tyre. Is it really? On dyno, yeah. Well, that's powerful, isn't it? That's it's not brilliant. bad. And, and I'm going to ask you the question that I ask all these Street Fighter lads. Is it finished? Uh, it's got to be finished. There's nothing you can do to this now. I there's no room left. Yeah, to if else. you went any further, we'd spoil it now. So we're moving on to project number two. So what? New Suzuki GSX 4000. Yeah. That's, and what happens to this then? I'll just keep that. You're going to keep hold of it? Yeah, I'll just use that as a stunt bike. 
<laughs> right, well, uh, I think it's beautiful, and I apologise for anything that I... No, you're right, right, mate, don't worry about it. But it's, uh, it really is a credit to you, it's, it's a cracking job, it's lovely. <laughs> Welcome to the third and final part of our MCI tour to the French Champagne region and time for a quick recap. Day one started with 57 bikes taking an early ferry crossing from Dover to Calais, then a 200 mile ride southeast to the town of Epinay. A very wet day one ended with a visit to a local champagne house and a very nice evening meal at a nearby hotel. Then on day two, we set off for a ride to another champagne house near the city of Reims. More opportunities to taste a top champagne before riding into Reims itself for a spot of lunch. Then, you've guessed it, more champagne and a chance to chat with some of the riders. It's clear how much sure. they enjoy touring, <laughs> but what about tour organiser Alistair McFarlane? <laughs> what does he get out of a job like this? I get a tremendous amount of pleasure, Jeff. Um, I used to run a publishing business. I was involved in motorcycle magazines for 10, 15 years, but I never really got the opportunity to jump on the bikes and actually go out and ride them. And now I'm in this tour business almost by default, came out of Motorcycle International, and it's just a business that I fell into. But it's tremendous being out there on the road, riding a bike of your own choice, putting lots and lots of miles on it and sharing that experience with lots of other people who've got a similar mindset. Yeah, because it, as I say, you're a people person, you enjoy mixing with them and you've got a, a very friendly thing. It's a job to find someone who hasn't sort of knows someone that's already been on one, you know what I mean? I think you've only, what have you got on this one? Just one or two people haven't been on MCI tour that's before? Right. Got to bear in mind, Jeff, this one's the 10th anniversary celebration. Yeah, so tour. that makes it a bit... So the, the offer was made to the people who've been with us previously and I wrote to lots of people and I was absolutely staggered by the response. Yeah, excellent. But can I ask you something about you, your own riding? You say you've got what you get out of it, but you cover a hell of a mileage. I mean, what's a typical annual mileage for you? Well, I'll be doing... Um, got 12 tours to various destinations, four race meetings, which I'll cover myself, and we've done a repeat on the Champagne tour, so that's 17 outings this year. I think 40, 50,000 miles this year, Jeff. <laughs> And the bit that struck us when we were coming down to, to Dover, that first bit in, in the UK, it must be the worst bit, wasn't it? What with speed restrictions, traffic and weather. It, it's, isn't this what it's all about? Yeah. The reason I want to take people to France or to other destinations throughout Europe is because you just get fed up with the congestion. Back in the UK, you get fed up with the road users who don't care about other motorcyclists or other road users on the road. And over here, it's just completely different. It's wide open. You came down yesterday, down the A26, and then we got onto the country roads. Nothing on the roads, Jeff. No. You can just go into that corner confident that there's not going to be four cars, five cars backed up to another set of traffic lights. Well, you saying that, there's something else, a question I've got to ask you, because if I were you, I'd probably be very tempted to move across the channel and base myself. I mean, you spend most of the year out of the UK, don't you? Yeah, but <laughs> home's, home's where the heart is, Jeff. Yeah. That's where I live, and I've thought about it. You know, the trek down south, I do get fed up with it. You're a bit M6, on autopilot, are you? Yeah. M6, M1, M20, M20, M1, M6. Yeah. Now, all right, you can do that three, four, five times, and you can live with it. Yeah. When you're doing it 16 or 17 times, Jeff, you know, <laughs> I'm seriously thinking about investing in a collapsible trailer yeah. and doing like the Americans do, tow your bike down to Dover yeah. and start the tour. Duh. Yeah. down in Dover because... Get rid of the nasty bit, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. There's, no, there's no fun in riding congested motorways. Not these days, Jeff. You can't make progress. And quite honestly, M25 on a bike is downright dangerous. It's, yeah, it's yeah. pretty horrible. Well, I don't think anyone would disagree with that. Just the end of tour party to go then, and some 80-odd very smartly dressed bikers 
boarded a coach and travelled to the restaurant for a night of fine food, lots more champagne and a short cabaret spot from Alistair with his bagpipes. Then Jeff agreed to be interviewed by Graham, a BMW riding tree surgeon from Staffordshire holding a champagne glass. Alcohol can have very strange effects on some people. A few presentations for birthdays and the like, and there was even one for me, a fancy number plate for my rather large Goldwing. But what about the bikes that Jeff and I had used for this tour? Well, as you can see, we've got a tremendous variety of machines over here this week, and all sizes, all shapes and sizes, but I've got the biggest. Yes, who are? I have indeed. This is it. Honda's new Goldwing, a GL1800. Yes, 1800cc, flat, six-cylinder motor. And for me, it was one of the few machines that I could bring all this way. It's safely, with a bit of comfort, but more importantly, it's got fantastic carrying capacity. And in this bike this weekend, we'll have all the camera equipment, all the sound equipment. We'll have a cameraman sat on here some of the time as well. And they say it's very, very, very comfy. Big sofa on wheels, if you like. I've not gone soft. That's my excuse. And I'm sticking to it. Not going soft. Well, if you believe that, you believe anything. But I can understand why he likes his luxuries. He's not as young as he used to be, after all. Anyway, what have I got? I've got the FJR 1300 Yamaha, the brand new one. It's also got shaft drive with this one, which is absolutely fantastic in this claggy weather we've been having. Not today, beautiful today. I've also got hard cases. Not as much carrying capacity as the wing, but nevertheless, I've got them. Got a tail pack on as well, got my old tank bag. But I've got something else that wing owners won't have, and Mr Johnson I've got. Just look at this. I've got an electrically powered screen, so there. And it works. Cool, eh? Yes, I suppose it is pretty fancy, Jeff. Well, by the end of our champagne tour, we'd covered close on 800 miles, and I still had a 300-mile trek home from Dover. So just how had our bikes performed? So, Jeff, I've got to ask you now, um, how have you enjoyed your first little expedition on this new FJR? It's very interesting. Oh, that's a German accent, isn't it? That's it is. We're in France. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so far... There's no room for German <laughs> accents. <laughs> Enough of that. You've been doing that all the time. All right, go on. But, the bike, it's a, I think it's a different concept, and Yamaha have really, I think, hit on, they're redefining things as far as um, this sort of bike goes, because we've had sports tourism, we're used to those, Blackbirds, ZZRs, and all the rest of them. I think this one's the other way around. This is a touring sports bike. Is it's it? It's slightly different, yeah. I don't understand that. Explain that to me, Jeff. Sure. Simple. Is it very, boy, very deep? Dear boy. No, it's not very deep. But you know, this one is a, I think, it's a touring bike, but it's got sporting pretensions. It's got a nice feel to it, and I can't wait to get it on some twisty stuff. All oh, right, right, back home, because of course we're only halfway through. We are. We've got a long slug back. We have, yeah. Do you want to know how I've enjoyed my touring sofa? Go on then. It's fantastic. <laughs> well, I've seen you nodding off once. <laughs> yeah, and bopping away to the music. Oh, yeah. Is that what it was? With Charles oh. Aznavour on and everything. It's been fantastic. <laughs> no, it's great. In fact, I'm just getting a bit fed up of. Uh, giving people guided tours of the bike. Yeah, I noticed that. It does attract a lot of... Yeah, everywhere I park it, I come back, there's a crowd around it. Yeah. But, I mean, it's big, it's new, it's imposing, it's, um, it's impressive, uh, but it is great. The only trouble is, now, um, I've got to take it home and I've got to clean the damn thing, which is going to take quite a while. But you're not the only one, are you? I've got to clean this as well. Oh, well, I know. You've not got as much to clean as me. <laughs> In fact, we'll clean them both, and when we have cleaned them both, we'll tell you more about both of these bikes very soon. In fact, you won't have to wait too long because I'll tell you all about the new Goldwing straight after the break. Now let me ask you a question and I want the honest answer. When a new model comes out, or should I say when an update of a current model comes out, do you ever really take any notice? Do you ever look at the spec and say, I wonder how different it is? I think the honest answer is no, you don't really. I certainly don't because I know it's going to have a few extra bits stuck on it, a few cosmetic changes, probably a new colour scheme for this year, but I think largely we tend to ignore all the spec on new models. But when Honda brought this out, their new GL1800 tour bus, their new Goldwing, you could hardly ignore it. It's absolutely huge. It is, as I say, 1800 cc's. And a machine this size is very difficult to ignore. Some say Goldwings are an acquired taste. Well, maybe, but once you climb aboard the new 1800, you'll be completely hooked. In fact, this bike was designed by Masanori Aoki. He's a man better known for his work in the development of sports bikes. And it's a fact that compared to the older GL 1500, the new wing is a completely different animal. 
In fact, the whole bike is different. It's completely different to all previous models, different in every way, shape and form. But it still looks like a Goldwing. It's a different shape, but it retains somehow. I don't know how they've managed to design it in, but it retains the classic Goldwing lines. The front end is different to the GL1500. The lights are different and everything. The mirrors are different. Very nice, the mirrors, aren't they, with these indicators? And very sort of Mercedes almost, that, isn't it? But very, very smart. But cleverly designed and still instantly recognisable as a Goldwing. And that's very, very important because all the dyed in the wool Goldwing fans, and we know there are thousands of them all over the world, they'll recognise it straight away. And the ones that I spoke to up to now really have fallen in love with it. They think it's a beautiful piece of kit. The engine, of course, is different, bigger than ever before. There was lots of talk, would Honda make a, a two litre gold wing? Would it be a 2.3, who knew what? But anyway, it's an 1800 now. Here it is. Same engine configuration, same sort of classic gold wing engine configuration. It's a flat engine, a flat six cylinder motor, this. There are three pistons pumping away there, going that way, and three on the other side. We've got side mounted radiators now, radiators before were under here on the gold wings. Everybody used to put fairy lights around them, remember them? Well, now we're side mounted, uh, mounted here, sort of VTR style, really, if you like, but all very, very neat, very cleverly done. Fuel injected now, of course, the motor, so super smooth power delivery and very, very efficient power delivery as well. The gearbox is a five speed. Well, I'm saying five speed, and technically I'm wrong there because if you read the information, they call it a four speed plus an overdrive because when you flick it up into the top, you get a pretty little light coming up on your dashboard that says OD. Very nice, very trendy. Of course, it's shaft drive. Any machine like this that's capable of doing the kind of mileages and the kind of distances that these things are designed for it goes without saying it's a shaft drive. It's low maintenance, nice, smooth transmission, all the rest of it. One word that you will hear a lot associated with the new GL1800 is the word sporty. And one of the reasons is because of the frame. It's a brand new frame. It's a twin spar alloy frame. The sort of frame, I mean, look at that there. It's sport bikey, isn't it? It's the sort of frame that you would associate with a more sporty bike. I'm not sure that you could call it sporty. It's certainly sportier than the GL1500. It definitely feels a bit more nimble, a bit more sporty, if you like, than the GL1500, but I'm not sure you could truly use the word sporty for this new Goldwing. Because after all, it's very, very big, of course, as you can see, it's very, very heavy. It weighs 800 pounds, that's the dry weight of this thing. So that's what, third of a ton, thereabouts. So you've got yourself, you've got a pillion passenger, You've got all your luggage all loaded up. You've got, I don't know, maybe half a ton going down the road. So how you can say that something that weighs half a ton and is this size is sporty, I'm not really sure. But all that weight, of course, takes a fair bit of stopping, takes a lot of stopping. And Goldwings, it's fair to say, have never been famous for having fantastic brakes. They've never had brilliant brakes, they've always worked, but they're definitely better on this. They've improved the brakes. You can't really see much because I've got these nice fancy chrome uh, covers over the uh, over the calipers over the discs there but beneath there there is a caliper and a disc and the same on the other side three piston caliper there twin discs there single down the back which you'll never ever see until you take the back end apart completely but they're very very good it's got a linked braking system on this which we're all familiar now with certainly on hondas which basically means as you know you press the front brake it will break a portion of the back brake and you brake you press the back brake pedal and it will break a portion of the front brake it's all very, very technical, it's very, very clever, but essentially that's how it works. Also on this, we've got ABS. Now the ABS on this model is on all the time. You can't switch it on and off like you can on some models. BMW spring to mind, they've got switchable ABS, but this has got ABS. Not that I've ever noticed it come in yet. They do say on a bike that if you notice ABS come in, then you're doing something wrong anyway. But it's nice to have it. Nice to have that bit of confidence that you know if you have to anchor up in an emergency, you're not going to lock your wheels. Because let's face it, if this thing should ever fall over, number one, get your leg out of the way pretty quick, and number two, leave it exactly where it is and phone your mates. But don't be put off by all that weight, because once the wheels are rolling, it all seems to disappear. And the wing does feel much lighter and more manoeuvrable than you'd expect from such a big machine. And talking about manoeuvrability, One important thing about this is because it's so big and heavy, it's got a reverse. Well, there's nothing new in that. The old one had a reverse, didn't it? The 1500 and BMW's K1200, that's got a reverse as well. But on the old 1500s, there was a handle here, like a lever that you pulled out, you pulled that, that engaged the starter motor and then you pressed the start button like that and it went backwards. This is slightly different. 
you need to be in neutral so if you're in neutral you press that that's reverse and it comes up there see little amber light there ah to show that you're in reverse as if you don't know and then you press the reverse button which is also the starter button you press that and away you go fantastic Fuel consumption turned out to be very impressive. I managed just over 200 miles from a tank, getting somewhere close to 40 miles to the gallon. Not bad for 1800 cc's. But it's in the handling department that this bike really does excel. I actually ran out of ground clearance a few times and even christened my new tow sliders. So love them or hate them, you simply can't ignore gold wings. They're big, they're brash and the new GL1800 could be yours for a cool £17,000. I feel like I've been talking all day already about this Goldwing. I could go on and on and on. But I've kept it very, very basic up to now with the technical things. Obviously, the engine, the frame, the brakes, they're different. But it, I've kept it very, very basic. It's obviously a lot more involved than that. And I haven't even mentioned all of this lot yet. All the gubbins, all the bits and pieces, the pockets, the little compartments, the buttons, the radio, the suspension, the boxes at the back, the central locking on the boxes at the back, the adjustables, I could go on and on and on. In fact, I might. In fact, why don't you leave me to play for a while, come back and join me in a bit, and I shall continue my guided tour of Honda's new Goldwing. Now then, what does this one do? Well, actually, I do know what all of these buttons are for and you'll be amazed at the amount of toys that come as standard with Honda's new GL1800. I'll tell you all about them on Two Wheels next week. Also on next week's show, we take a look at the bike which Jeff used for our recent French trip, Yamaha's new sports tourer, the FJR1300.